A healthy person has a thousand wishes, but a sick person has only one. A new field of study, nutritional psychiatry, looks at how diet can improve mental health. It could help patients shift from pharmaceuticals to food-based therapies. Many of us in this room right now have lost people we love way too early. There are people that could have lived an extra 20 years, an extra 10 years, an extra five years, and that's unacceptable to me. There's something we can do about that. Imagine waking up in the morning with so much pain and inflammation in your arms that you couldn't even type a few sentences on a keyboard without experiencing massive pain. As a result, you're forced to use a voice dictation software for two years just to be able to keep working and provide for your family. Toxins across that layer that can potentially get into the blood and be pro-inflammatory. And what if on top of that you were $100,000 in debt with a two-year-old and a three-year-old daughter? This is the exact situation our next speaker, Talor, was in seven years ago. By a show of hands, if you or one of your loved ones got sick and had a disease that could only be cured by you paying $100 million, by a show of hands, how many people would pay that money in a second? This forced Atalor to learn everything he could about health and inflammation in the body. And he has been on this health journey ever since. And I set the intention that this presentation is going to save someone's life. And maybe that prevents someone in this room from getting a disease down the road. Goal number two for this presentation is to increase your healthy lifespan by an average of 10 years while feeling better than you previously did. Not just adding 10 miserable years to your life, right? 10 real healthy years to your life. Fast forward to today, Talor is completely pain free and feeling better than he ever has in his life. I went from having pain and inflammation in my body to being completely pain free and being in the best shape of my life. I truly believe that every single person here can feel better in 10 years from now than you did now. You can feel better. I know people who feel better at 60 than they did when they were 30. That's very possible. It's very realistic for you to do. I don't know, but I can tell you one thing, I feel better, I had more energy, and I don't think it was a coincidence. So your job now is to take this information and run with it. So how do you feel right now? Really, take a minute to stop and get into your body and think about how do I feel right now? What did you eat today? How are you feeling in this moment? How are your relationships? How's your business? How is your life overall? Really get honest with yourself and take a look inside. If you're watching this video right now, it's because you're either already a peak performer or you want to be a peak performer. And peak performance means different things to different people. So, you know, for some people, it just means having enough energy and vitality to be there for their family, to be there for their kids to come home after a long day at work and still be able to spend time with your kids and your family. For some people, being a peak performer means spending time with their family, building multi-million dollar businesses, and still having leftover energy and feeling better than you ever have in your entire life. Whatever it means for you, just get honest with yourself and take a minute and think about where are you right now? How are you feeling? How are things going in your life? And we know that no matter where you are, we can turn things around. Peak performance is about transformation. It's about a transformation regardless of where you are. There's always another level. What got you to here is not enough to get you to here. There's gotta be more. What got you to here is not enough to get you to here. There's always another level. But you gotta start somewhere. So let's take a look at where you are right now, and then we'll talk about how you're gonna get from this level to the next level.
and from this level to the next level. Because there's always another level. No matter who you are in your peak performance transformation, there's always another level. But let's start with where you are right now. Please help me welcome Salor Zamir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. I want to tell you real quick about the Appleton Food Study. So Appleton, Wisconsin, there was a school, there was a lot of at-risk kids in this school, a lot of people, kids getting into fights, kids misbehaving. So they said, well, let's do a study. Let's, there was a, a nearby, there was a, a meal service that served only natural foods that were not heavily processed with no added sugars, things of that nature. So they replaced the vending machines that had all the sugars and cookies and things of that nature. They replaced it with water coolers. And instead they brought in the, the foods, breakfast and lunch from this healthy meal service. Here's the result. So social worker Deb Larson explained that a reduced amount of sugar and processed foods in the diet allowed students to be more stable and makes mental health and anger management easier to manage. Teacher Mary Buyet said she saw changes literally overnight. The way they acted, the way they were able to pay attention, their grades, she, uh, there was a decrease in impulsive behaviors, fewer disciplinary actions. But here's the real interesting part for me about this experiment. One day out of the year, they said, let's do this. It's clear that this, this new thing is working, the students are behaving better, but let's just give them a cheat day. Once a year, we'll give them a cheat day, right? You've all heard of cheat day? One day out of the year, we're going to do junk food day. So for one day, each, each year, the students and staff drank sugar-sweetened soda, Kool-Aid, chips, brownies, all the junk food that used to be in the vending machine that they took out. They brought it back for one day. Staff said that during the few junk food days they hosted, the students were wired and unable to focus. They complained of headaches, stomach aches, all things of that nature. Interesting. Very interesting. Teacher Mary Briette decided she's going to survey the students before and after junk, day, junk food day to see what the results were. Very interesting results. Before junk food day, 70% of the students said yes to having felt happy and nice after school. After junk food day, only 13% responded yes. But yet, in our day and age, there's so many kids, right, they get diagnosed with depression. Oh, the kid has depression, so they go to the doctor. Does the doctor ask him, what did you put in your food? What, what, what are you putting in your body? Are you eating sugar? Are you eating junk food? Are you eating fast food that's fried in, in, uh, in canola oil and vegetable oils at high temperatures that ruin the whole chemical composition of the food? Did the doctor ask them? No, the doctor just says, the doctor just prescribes them uh, antidepressant medication in, instead of looking at what you're putting inside your body. And then this, then this child now, the antidepressants cause all sorts of other problems in the child. Their whole life could be, get, gets up because of it. They're, they're thinking, and now in their mind, they're thinking, oh, I can't do that. I've, I've been on antidepressants since I was a kid. They think there's something wrong with them, when really it might have just been what they put in their body. Um, I feel grateful and, and blessed that we, we are able to have this opportunity and uh, we're educated and he can help educate us better and um, I, just, I just feel you know, positive that my kids are going to grow up you know, 
healthy and, and striving to be the best they can be and instilling these values in them at a young age. That's a picture of me and my two daughters back in 2012. In this picture, I was in debt. I was in pain with massive inflammation in my arms. I was an int I've been an internet marketing consultant now for 13 years. I was banging away for the first several years. I was banging away on a computer with bad posture, eating whatever. Be careful, honey. With the, but you have to pick me up. Hmm? Yes, to pick me up well. I remember in the summer of 2013, I literally had to take a vacation with my family. We had to drive from Vegas to California because I was in so much pain in my arms that I literally could not type more than a sentence or two on the computer. I was in so much pain. I ended up using a voice dictation software for two years. I couldn't type more than a sentence or two on the computer. And I remember we had to take this vacation and I couldn't even drive, I was in so much pain. My wife was driving, I was in the passenger seat, my two daughters were in the back seat. And I remember I just broke down and started crying. I literally, I'm like, what am I gonna do? I don't know how I'm gonna provide for my kids. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be able to type on a computer ever again. I thought like my life was over. What ended up, what I thought was one of the worst things that could ever happen to me, later on ended up becoming one of the best things that could ever happen to me. We'll get into that a little bit later. So how did I turn it around? I went to the doctor and he gave me a bunch of medication, right? No. <laughs> Meds, mindset, exercise, diet, and supplement. Okay, this is the key. One real mindset shift that I hope you understand here and take home with you is that inflammation comes from inside of you. Their kids wanna eat junk, but like, you want to eat healthy and you want them to eat healthy um i think maybe you should be like I, th I think maybe you should say to your kid or maybe if you're the healthy kid and if it's vice versa the kid should say to the parent um uh i would like you to eat more healthy because uh if, if you're not super healthy it can lead to many bad things so please try and eat healthy but you can eat junk every like once in a while but like try and eat more healthy <laughs> <laughs> One of my problems was that I was trying to solve a solution with something outside of myself. I had pain in my arm, so I'm like, oh, I need a wrist wrap. I need an elbow brace. I need this pain relief cream. I was up late at night on Amazon. I probably bought three different pain relief devices, every pain relief cream you can imagine, wrist wraps, elbow wraps, all this kind of stuff. And I'm researching every night. I'm like, you know, you can read all this stuff on the internet. And it's like, oh, if you have pain there, you have carpal tunnel. What is carpal tunnel anyway? People, because you're on a computer all day, you have carpal tunnel. Well, how come millions of other people in the world are on the computer all day and they don't have carpal tunnel? Did anyone ever ask that question? Right, so I'm like, one day I think I have carpal tunnel, then I think I have arthritis, then I'm like, oh no, it's tendonitis, maybe it's tennis elbow, maybe it's golfer's elbow, and I, I need a wrap, I need this, I need the pain relief cream. I'm searching for a solution outside of myself, and you're never gonna find a solution outside of yourself for something that originates on the inside. Something that comes from the inside. Success requires mental and physical energy, like I said before. What you put in your body has a major effect on what you're able to accomplish in your life. And it's not only the immediate results. We just showed you, I just showed you proof that immediate short-term results. You'll be able to think better, you'll have more energy. Mental and physical energy. Success requires energy. If you cannot tap into your inner superhuman powers, you will not achieve your full potential. But it's not only these immediate short-term results. It's me because many diseases, it's also the long-term effects because many diseases take 20, 30 years to develop. You don't just wake up one day and get Alzheimer's. You don't just wake up one day and get cancer. These are things that develop over 20 or 30 years. So it might make sense to start looking at this stuff right now. Do something about it now. It has short-term benefits and long-term benefits.
Ask yourself this question, would you pass the cookie test? You may have heard of this. Years ago, Stanford University did a test where they put a bunch of kids in a room and they put a cookie on the table and they said, we're going to leave you in here. I think it was for 20 minutes. And if you eat the cookie, you don't get another one. If you don't eat the cookie, if you can resist for 20 minutes, we'll give you two cookies after. So you have to ask yourself this question. So by the way, they followed these people for, throughout their whole lives later. The people that were able to not eat the cookie, that were able to with, control themselves and have enough discipline to not jump for the short-term gratification, those people had more success in just about every area of their life when they followed those people for 20, 30 years after. Okay, so would you pass the cookie test? Almost literally and figuratively, right? Like literally a cookie, you know, you could eat that cookie right now and have short-term gratification, but are you thinking about what is that gonna do to your body? What is that gonna do to your energy levels? What is that doing over the next 20, 30 years in your life? Think about that, would you pass the cookie test? on how food affects your mood. Government figures show more than 16 million American adults report having a major episode of depression in the past year. Women are affected more often than men. A new field of study, nutritional psychiatry, looks at how diet can improve mental health. It could help patients shift from pharmaceuticals to food-based therapies. Our Dr. Tara Narula is here. Good morning. Good morning, Nora. I could talk about this forever. I'm so fascinated by this subject. So just Broadly speaking, what is nutritional psychiatry? Well, it's the idea that maybe a psychiatrist should be asking you what was on your dinner plate last night. What did you eat for lunch? The idea that food plays an essential role in our mental health in the same way that we think about it playing a role in cardiovascular disease, in our blood sugar management, in our gastrointestinal health. John LaPook just did uh, Sunday morning. We talked about its effects on cancer. So it's, it's something that we don't often think about. But there has been recent research in this emerging field in the last five years that shows that healthier dietary patterns can reduce the risk of things like depression and anxiety. Healthy dietary patterns, for instance, the Mediterranean diet that's been yes. studied and, sh and shown to reduce risk of depression. Um, but there's also specific nutrients and vitamins, things like the B vitamins, omega-3s, uh, iron, zinc, folate, magnesium, choline. These are some other things that people can think about. Probiotics. <laughs> Welcome to my living room. Let's uh, talk a little bit about some tips for how to live a peak performance life. So here are some of my top 10 tips to improve your health and longevity. I'll get some of the tactics here now as well so you can at least get something to think about. First is starting your day with quiet time. So every morning, Monday through Friday, when I wake up, obviously I get my daughters ready for school, I make my one daughter a super healthy smoothie, make my other daughter a healthy breakfast, sometimes I make my wife a healthy smoothie, they get out the door at 8 a.m., and I then go outside with my journal, and I do visualization, gratitude, whether sometimes meditation, sometimes it's breathing techniques, sometimes it's high-level thinking time, Warren Buffett, all these super successful people, they do thinking time, they read, they're not in a rush, they're not, you think these people are, are waking up in the morning and checking social media, jumping on their phone? The, the, literally, like there's, when you think about when you get on your phone, you're like, you're looking at your phone, this is, it's like tunnel vision. You're literally, you're literally not open. You're literally like, oh, you wake up, you grab your phone, you're like in this tunnel vision, you're not open. There's literally been studies, they take people out into an open field and by being open with the open sky, they become more open. Yeah, you know, it's funny that when I was broke, I used to think that I had to go right away online and, and, and be busy and work and check my email right away and do all that stuff. What you realize is that successful people actually don't do that. Successful people usually have much more quiet time, much more thinking time, as Keith Cunningham says. Eating organic. Um, and I know some people obviously say, well, it's a lot more expensive to eat organic. The reason it's important to eat organic is because non-organic foods are often sprayed with pesticides. In fact, that's a way that the farmers can make sure that they don't lose their crops, so they spray it with pesticides. 
The problem is, is that the United States especially is one of the countries that is allowing glyphosate. And glyphosate is now a major, major problem, a real concern these days. And so non-organic foods are going to be, have a lot more glyphosate in them. And uh, you know, you've probably heard about the evil Monsanto. They recently settled for $8 billion dollars um, a lawsuit, I think there was about 18,000 people in this lawsuit, many of whom have cancer and other illnesses that they believe is caused by glyphosate. Shannon Drenick battled anxiety and depression for years, but today she's not dependent on any medicines and she credits her strict nutrient-rich diet. So dark leafy greens and then um, obviously protein. It was her doctor's recommendation and Shannon says it significantly improved her mental health. I think it was a game changer for me, for, with her. A game sure. changer? Yeah, absolutely. There is emerging research and evidence that nutritional psychiatry or using diet to treat anxiety and mood disorders such as depression is beneficial. Dr. Eva Selhub has been treating Shannon for the past 14 years. How do the foods that we eat affect our brains? In many, many different ways. I remember your, your, your brain needs fuel. And even though it's a really small part of your body, it actually takes 20% of that fuel. The next thing I like to do is get a little sunlight. Easier to do here in Vegas than I understand if you live in Chicago or Canada or something like that, I understand. But getting a little sunlight, now I don't mean getting sunburnt, just getting a little sunlight in the morning. It has tons of benefits from resetting your circadian rhythm and helping melatonin be re released later at night to tons and tons of other benefits. Me personally, when I go out in the morning, I'm doing my, grat my gratitude, my visualization. I like to either be in a tank top or if sometimes I'll take my shirt off. You know, whatever it is, try to get a little sunlight. E bonus points if you put your feet in the ground. If it's not too cold to go barefoot, put your feet in the ground, a little bit of grounding. It actually is proven to decharge all this Wi-Fi and electrical stuff that's going on. You can be decharged by simply going out barefoot into the grass, into the dirt. It's called grounding. Getting good sleep. So I use an Aura Ring, it's O-U-R-A, and the Aura Ring you don't have to use the ring, the point is really to get good sleep and I'll give you some tips on that. But the Aura Ring, if you want to take it to the next level, tracks your deep sleep, your REM sleep, your heart rate variability, all, all sorts of things of that nature so you can kind of see. And you'll notice some interesting things. Like for example, when I, uh, if I have some wine or something, you know, uh, my, my heart rate goes up at night, my body temperature is up, my uh, REM sleep is way less. And so, again, I already don't really drink much alcohol as it is, but uh, you know, when I woke up on New Year's Day and I, and I looked at my stats from the Aura Ring, uh, they weren't very good. Now if you do nothing else, if you took nothing else away from this presentation, this would be the one biggest piece of advice I would give you. And that would be to go to the gym or exercise while listening to audiobooks or podcasts. So over the last few years, I've listened to over 300 audiobooks and countless number of podcasts while working out at the gym. And I know a lot of people like to listen to music. Well, I got my playlist, man, it pumps me up. That's cool. But what do you think is gonna get you further in life and help you achieve your goals. Listening to the same playlist you already listened to a thousand times or listening to going through a new audiobook every week, a new book. You're finishing a new audiobook every week. You're listening to new podcasts every week. You're growing yourself. You're learning. This is one of the biggest things you could do is you're improving your mental health. You're improving your physical health. Go to the gym while listening to audiobooks. Same thing in the car. Any opportunity you have. And a cold shower is actually my next tip for you because uh, cold showers are great for so many things from lowering inflammation in your body and that's my number one goal when it comes to anything in health is lowering inflammation in your body. So cold showers will help you lower inflammation. It's very good for your hair and skin as well. Um, and they're great for mitochondria and they actually lower your, your blood glucose levels. The next thing, again, I've kind of touched on it, but eliminating processed sugar, refined carbohydrates, and fried foods, they spike your blood sugar, especially fried foods are very bad for you. French fries are served with almost every meal at every restaurant, but if you switch that French fry to a side salad or a vegetable, which almost every restaurant will do, you'll be making a tremendous health change in your life just by doing that. 
We asked Nightline's John Donvan to sift through all the reporting we've done on the problem over the past year to try to find the real villain behind the obesity epidemic. Kristen and Colin Robinson are a mother and son Nightline followed last year through a several thousand dollar program. A two week long weight loss camp which basically retaught them how to move and how to eat. Today's lunch list for me was veggie burger, baked beans, and go four ounces of gold leek soup. Americans spend a lot of money trying to lose weight and a lot of time talking about it. We're spending $150 billion a year treating obesity related uh, illnesses. So we know this is a problem and there's a lot at stake. But not even her exhortations seem to be getting through because this new study published today in the Journal of Adolescent Youth looked at more than 6,000 middle school children across the nation and found that nearly 7% are not obese, but severely obese in the 99th percentile for weight, which means the problem is worse than believed. A new report looking at obesity projections finds that if we don't improve our lifestyles over the next 20 years, obesity rates in adults could climb to 44% across the nation and exceed 60% in 13 states. If you're overweight, if you're unhealthy, you gotta act now. You gotta be disciplined about this. There is real change that can be made real fast for you, but you gotta take action. You gotta have a sense of urgency, right? Not like a nervous sense of urgency. There's something that I like to call a calm sense of urgency. So you're not frantic and running about your life like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I have to do this. It's not about that. You can still have a calm sense of urgency where you can have a good, nice, calm internal state, but also know that you gotta get shit done. And when that comes to your health, whether that be with your family, whether that be with your business, if you don't have the health that you want right now, if you're overweight, if you're sick, if you're in pain and inflammation, you have to do something about this now. It's not gonna get any better by waiting and procrastinating. Now is the time, in this moment, for you to take control and do something about it. So I invite you to think about, right now in this moment, what are the biggest changes you need to make in your life? And if you're already a peak performer, if you're already very healthy in your life, we know that there's always another level, but maybe for you it's family. Maybe for you there's something else in your life that's been missing that it's time for you to take control of now that you've realized that it's important to you. So easy first steps, eliminate the sugar from your drinks, eliminate fried foods, and eliminate the desserts. You have to put health as your number one priority. And that's what I hope this inspires you to do. When you put health as your number one priority, you'll live that full life full of energy and vitality. You won't have to worry about dying 20 years too early and not being there for your friends and family members and kids. This is the time to take control of your health. For years I was chasing success, just monetary success. And then when I had the pain and inflammation in my arms and dealing with all that pain, I started to realize that that was far more important than just making money. And um, you know, ironically, when I started taking care of my health, the money came. I just realized even more that health is the most important thing. And so I'm inspired by helping other people understand their true potential. We have so much to be grateful for in our lives. So much that we're here to live for and we all, everyone wants to be alive, everyone wants to live. And for me that just goes hand in hand with health. The, the healthier I am, the longer I'm going to live. The healthier I am, the more I can make the most of this life. to believe that health is hard. This is a belief system that maybe you've had in the past that health is hard. It's hard to eat healthy. And that's a belief that a lot of people have. Just like before anyone ever ran a four minute mile, before Roger Bannister ran a four minute mile, people believed that it was impossible to run a four minute mile, that your heart would explode in your body and you would die. It was actually, I think, an article in the American Medical Journal saying that it was humanly impossible. But then 
The interesting thing is when Roger Bannister broke the, the record and ran a four minute mile, after that, I believe in the next few years, something like 38 people ran a four minute mile. So, and now you have high school kids running a four minute mile. So we know that once something is done by someone, belief systems around that change, and then it's done by more and more and more people. And so my hope is that as we start raising the consciousness around health and people living a longer, fulfilled, happier life, that the belief system will change. So the truth is we're living in one of the most incredible times, really the most incredible time to ever be alive with technology and the advances in health that we've seen and everything we've learned over the last hundreds of years, thousands of years about health. It's an incredible time. We have some amazing knowledge and we know now, you know, what really works. It's amazing to think that over 200,000 people have joined the peak performance community and hopefully by the time you're watching this it'll be over a million people. And so that really shows me, it really gives me hope that people, this is working, this stuff works. Like people know, people see the results, people are getting the results. So I'll leave you with this. When you're 100 years old looking back at your life, what will you say? Will you say that you lived a happy, healthy, energized life and that you lived up to your full potential? So your job now is to take this information and run with it. Prioritize your health. Make it the most important thing in your life. Some people say, well, my family is the most important thing in my life. Well, that's great. If you don't have your health, you cannot be there for your family. Think about this every morning, and I hope you do too. The choice is yours. Choose today. Make a decision right now in this moment. Be the person that you know you can be. It starts now. Go past the cookie test and do the things that will serve you and your family in the long run. Think long term, don't think short term. Welcome to Peak Performance. Thank you.